data in tables. So we discussed a bit how to annotate data by mentioning the metadata. Then we discussed uh, about how to provide unique identifier to the different objects that we interact with. And now we go to the more like the heart of this lesson, which is how to structure the data, both in tables and in files inside the project. So the first chapter is about data in tables. We already have a look at the table, but we're gonna uh, have a look at another one now. So the exercise one of this lesson, let me check if I can quickly copy it. Or, or is anyone else on this task? Nope. Okay. Um, so I will I will copy the link uh, to to this um, to this table inside the share notes, and the exercise here. Oh, thank you, someone did. And the exercise here uh, is uh, to uh, find. Uh, all the errors or all the things that go wrong inside this data. And with this, we're going through the errors in this table indeed. Um, so um, let's quickly check if we mentioned everything here. So first of all, we mentioned colors. Uh, do we know the meaning of colors and do the colors on one table have the same meaning of the colors on the other table? No idea. Why is one row red and the other says error? Is there a link between these two things or not? We don't know. Um, what is the meaning of the values in the media column? No idea. And also listing them um, uh, not with the same format might cause problem. Like does plus s mean the same thing than plus suk? We don't know. Um, are genotypes the same in different blocks here and there? And then before averaging the biomass, we would need conversion between this format and this format. So the non numerical one only, the G with the space and the G without. And then we also have uh, milligrams here. Averaging per genotypes will need a manual selection of the suitable entries uh, because uh, it, they are not always referred to uh, with the same code. So this is uh, F, um, FEA and this is again FEA. Are these two things the same or, or not? We don't know. So um, if we were to save this data to other formats, like you mentioned CSV or TSV, uh, there's a lot of information that will be lost uh, because uh, the the color are gonna be lost, but also the errors, uh, the the red row there is gonna be lost, and the bold too. Um, and yeah, the other columns uh, don't say much. Uh, when we export this this table. Uh, to CSV, something that is also not straightforward is the fact that I'm actually including two tables here and not only one. And I uh, suggest you do this uh, as soon as I provide you the link of the table, which I know I still haven't a link inside the pad. Um, I suggest you do this to try and the update date, um, uh, date may change. So the common spreadsheet errors that we mentioned so far are using multiple table inside the same spreadsheet. A solution, partial solution to this might be to use multiple tabs inside the same uh, Excel file, for example. Uh, but just a warning that then, uh, for example, when you are exporting to CSV or TSV, you will need to export this specific tab inside a different file. So this might change your, um, file structure inside the folder. So um, the suggested way is just to go for multiple tables correspond to multiple files. That's it. That's the easiest way of managing this. Then the meaning of zero. So when, e, when a zero is a zero, fill in the cell with the zero. When it's not a zero, find uh, a good way of labeling it. Uh, there are problematic null values like 
zero can be one if it doesn't really mean zero, but also minus one, minus 100, 1000, all, all these uh, random numbers that are that happen to be user node values, they obviously screw up our averages when we average by column. So um, just be aware that choosing a, a number might, uh, might interfere with your calculation inside the experiments. And this, um, this table mentions all the possible values you can choose as null values, for example, to label when the experiment went wrong for any reason, but and all the problems that might be linked to it. So using zero as a null value as the problem that is not distinguishable from a true zero in like an experiment with value zero. Uh, using blank, is often the best option and compatible with most uh, programming languages, but it, it might be hard to distinguish values that are missing from those overlooked. So from those that we just forgot to fill in. Um, minus uh, all the minus and plus uh, values are not recognized in null, so they can screw up our calculations. DNAs uh, can be abbreviation of, uh, for example, North America. So they can be used with some data types, but maybe are not the best for other data types and so on. So an N slash A is an alternative form that should be avoided because it's often not compatible with software. Null can cause problems with data type. Non, no data and missing and all the plus and minus, uh, et cetera, are uncommon and can cause problems with data types and need to be avoided. Any reaction to this table? Usually there is some. Would you agree with this? Okay. Um, so, actually, sorry, um, just one thing to add, I sometimes use not a number um, like NAN to play somewhere if I if I need it to be um, a blank, and then that's actually not included here. And I think for many programming languages, it's acceptable. It is acceptable for, for some programming languages. The warning would be the same as NA, I would say. Uh, or NA. So they, they can be the abbreviation of something else. So okay, depending right. on the type of data you're using, you should check that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I usually go for blanks, but I, I I understand that my case is a bit specific because I often don't work with data that I, that I fill in personally. So it's not data that a human fills in. And so I don't end up in the situation where I can have cells that were overlooked. While if I were they can, you know, uh, filling in data manually. That could definitely be the case that I skip a cell because I'm a human. <laughs> and uh, so I don't, I wouldn't say, like I wouldn't push this suggestion too far. It depends on the type of your data. Okay, so um, uh, going on with the common split spreadsheet errors, um, also using formatting to convey information uh, or, um, organizing data. That's something that we extensively commented that the fact that the computers don't really interpret formatting easily. Placing comments or, or units. So comments also disappear when you export to different formats. And even if you open the same file with a different program, for example, if you open um, an Excel sheet with the uh, Google uh, sheet, um, comments might disappear depending on the type of the version of this uh, Excel file. So common, uh, comments are not something that travels together with the data. Entering more than one piece of information in a cell. Um, this is something that, so the, the specific, um, one of the true information that you included or one of the multiple information that you included uh, might be needed at the later stage of your, of your analysis, for example, to filter your data. So in this case, if you are, for example, collecting data about the patient, it includes the, the gender and uh, uh, the age on different columns. So you will be able to filter if you ever need to, or 
average, uh, collect data, and so on. Um, inconsistency in used values, especially with very long table, we might forget how we started uh, encoding our data at the very top. So for example, the species name should be consistent. And in general, when you choose which standard to use, try not to place spaces, um, avoid abbreviation, and include units inside your uh, field names. So uh, why um, to, to, um, to use to avoid spaces and, not un and use underscore instead? Because some programs or some um, programming languages might uh, by default split the data using spaces. So you should be aware that uh, your data might be split inside two columns if it includes spaces. Avoid abbreviation because they're not clear and then you will need another file to explain your abbreviation in the main file. And this is not what uh, field names are for. And include units. So for example, in this case, a good name for the max temperature in Celsius would be this. A good alternative would be max temp, but you shouldn't use uh, symbols and parentheses and spaces to write it. Unless there's a specific question about this, I think we can go on with, again, uh, what I just mentioned. So use a special character in data, uh, the computers in general struggle with these, so don't use them. Um, use values without field. So uh, maybe at the end of your table, you know, have two rows with some general description about the data, the authors and the, the, the file. If you do that, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but at least put a description of what are those, so the author and title. And avoid merging cells, I think. It were okay, and avoid merging cells. I will add this um, because again, this is uh, something that when you export to other format, it might be lost. Okay, so now going to exercise two, um, we can probably do this over the break. Uh, so. Exercise two is about spotting problems inside the, the, this uh, table. So which of these problems, and um, you will find the problems listed inside the exercise. So using multiple tables, using multiple tabs, not filling in zero and so on, is inside each of the rows or columns. So you should basically place, um, identify where a problem uh, is inside this file. And I suggest that we do that by just by listing next to the, for example, I'm, I'm now uh, commenting on using multiple tables in our shared notes. Um, I, if I identify that this is a problem in column C, then I can just uh, annotate it here. Is the, the question clear? Is the exercise clear? So, these are the problems and these are the, the, the rows and columns that might be related to the specific problems. Uh, row, so the using row five includes both formatting to convey information and organizing data um, because of the, the bold and color and using problematic field names uh, like uh, um, like the fact that we have sample here and sample there, and the fact that sample here is also cell here and so on. Um, row two is linked to entering more than one piece of information in a cell. So here uh, the study includes the data and, uh, and so both, both dates, start and end dates, for example, and it also includes two different authors um, just um, in the same field, but divided by uh, um, a symbol. And the values without field labels. So we know that these are probably the authors, uh, but there's no, there's no label there. Column C, um, 
is linked to the problem of inconsistency in, uh, in the values used um, because as we mentioned, uh, phi A is, uh, of, is written both in this format and as uh, uh, minus uh, 211. And column E is linked with the problem of using formatting to convey information and organizing data. This is also the case for the genotype actually, so also column C actually. Um, so in column A, we have um, blue and, uh, and yellow and uh, the placing comments for units and, and cells. So it includes the grams here and it even uses two different um, units for the measurement. And column L um, has the problem of not filling in zeros, uh, but, but minus one. Um, also column H actually has this problem uh, because we had this error and empty space here. So again, this is a proposal of how uh, this problem can be subdivided. Uh, and it's also, it was also a way to have another look at uh, the different problems linked with data in this in table formats. So how to better restructure this data? This is a proposal of how we could restructure the same uh, data file. And um, yeah, this kind of provocative question is how do we, how long do you think it took to clean the regional problematic data? So depending, I would say if um, this was done right away, right after the experiment. It's easier uh, if it's uh, done from someone else, um, like uh, someone that didn't really collect this data. This, this, this is even more complicated because they have to get in contact with the original collector of the data and try to uh, get from them what was the meaning of the different fields. So it might take a while. And uh, yeah, and again, you you can um, you can observe that all the, the columns that include the numerical data now only include the numerical data. So no unit, no, no notation. The unit is actually annotated here on top. This is a proposal. It's not the only way to restructure this data, but um, this works at least to calculate averages and so on. I'm still not fully okay with. Uh, some data being placed here and there and in colors, but yeah, that's a, a start, a good start, I would say. So exercise three, we're not going to doing it together because we are a little bit, uh, little bit late on schedule. Um, and so you are gonna have to believe me <laughs> about this, but you can also test uh, later on. So if you don't open Excel or, any other, um, for example, Google Sheets, and try to fill in these different uh, ways to, to write uh, dates, it's highly probable that Excel would reformat them. So whatever you type here, it's highly probable that Excel will understand it in a different way, um, especially with dates. But there are so many things that can be interpreted as dates that are not, especially in the biological field, that are not dates. For example, gene names, um, since they are usually uh, assembled with, uh, uh, you know, a word or the start of a word and a number, uh, they often end up in the uh, as being interpreted as uh, dates because maybe the start of the words uh, is the start of a, of a month and the number then is interpreted as the, the day of the month. And this was actually a, a, a scientific case uh, some years ago when this study identified that one in five of the more than 3,000 genetics paper that were investigated included errors in their data tables. So due to the fact that Excel converted gene names into calendar dates or, or random numbers. So this is not something that doesn't happen. This is something that happens often. So when using, when converting these Excel files to um, CSVs and DSVs, the Excel uh, format was uh, was um, 
was exported. So uh, uh, date uh, converted or a gene name converted by Excel to a date was actually there forever. So, um, and you should always document what format you're using to represent dates uh, when exporting to CSVs and PSVs. So yeah, that was to, to strengthen the message. Please worry about this. This is not something that uh, doesn't happen. Um, yeah, so regarding the format of date, uh, we would suggest you to either use the European logic, but if possible, even the actual logic. So start with the, uh, with the year, month, and day, because when you sort, for example, your files inside your folder, this way you will have files uh, actually sorted by date easily. Um, and yeah, this, this is not our slide again. I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't claim this is a total absurdity, but yes, a little bit maybe. Um, like having the year, day, and month doesn't really make sense to me. So just to um, have a, a little of a smile on it, um, this uh, tweet by Excel both that says uh, the classes are full, the classes are empty, but Excel will interpret this as the classes first of February. So suggestion for date is either to use the format year, month, day, or to simply split uh, these three information because these are actually three different information inside three different columns if you're including them in, uh, in a table. So to use or not to use Excel, uh, we are aware that uh, Excel is widely used and nowadays even admissible as being fair because everyone can access uh, Excel files. However, um, text files uh, like uh, comma, this means uh, this is missing an M or tab separated values uh, can be accessed without any software requirements. So they are highly, we highly encourage you to use those kind of files instead. And, um, but we don't want to discourage you to keep using whatever your community is using. Uh, just be aware of the, the possible problems that are linked to the usage of a specific tool. And if you use Excel or any other table format extensively, we definitely suggest to have a look at OpenRefine, which is a free open source tool for working with messy data. It does several things like clustering your text label, for example. So if you have a table where you use different but similar names for the same thing, OpenRefine will be able to capture this kind of information and to suggest you to reformatted. And if you're interested in having more information about this, there's a category course available that is called Data Cleaning with Open Refine for Ecologies that we can probably link in the, ta in the tab. I will remember to do that afterwards. And this is it regarding tables. 